sleep. Everyone knows it's imperative for your body, right? I mean, it helps our body recover, regenerate, and repair itself. Yet only one out of three Americans get enough sleep per day. But the thing is, we're all busy. We all live busy lives. I mean, as high schoolers, we have to go to school, we do our homework, we go to clubs after school, we participate in sports, we have to study for standardized tests like the ACT and SAT, and we have to study for normal quizzes and tests in school. In addition to all that, we all live social lives. I mean, we have to send our streaks every day, we have to like everyone's photogram, photo on Instagram, and we all gotta need those little breaks in between. But you see, we often get so caught up in our lives that we forget the most important part, and that's taking care of our overall health. While all of us know and realize the importance of sleep in our daily lives, we often don't see and realize the effects of sacrificing it in our daily lives. Now, this is Al. Al is an average high schooler. Aver Al lives in an average town, and Al goes to an average school. Now, Al has an average routine. He wakes up at 5.30, goes to bed at 11. Al finds either school hard nor easy. And as a result, Al works averagely. Now, after a couple of weeks, Al realizes that he starts to lose focus. He's less alert. He's less concentrated in class. And as a result, his academic performance suffers. And Al's confused. What do I do? So Al does what most high schoolers would do. He works harder. He pushes back his bedtime. And now instead of going to bed at 11, he goes to bed at 12. But after a few weeks of doing this, Al's performance becomes even worse. Al's more frustrated. Because not only does he have to deal with the pressures he put on himself, but his parents, his teachers, and his friends as well. You see, even, even a loss of one to two hours of sleep per day, your body suffers as if it hasn't slept for a whole day or two. That means that 73% of high schoolers are going to school with the brain of zombies. Now, sleep deficiency, it alters parts of our brain. If you don't get enough sleep, you're gonna have trouble coping with change. You're gonna have trouble making decisions. You're gonna have trouble solving problems and you're gonna have trouble coping with your emotions. Now, have you ever noticed why teens are a lot more fit compared to adults? Well, a part of that reason is due to hormones. They control how our body grow. But when you get less sleep, your levels of hormones significantly decreases. And what that means is that you are limiting your height, you are limiting your weight, and you are limiting your muscle mass. In addition to all those three, you are at an increased risk of obesity. And obesity is a huge problem in the United States. I mean, one out of three people are considered obese. But wait a minute, doesn't that statistic seem familiar? Well, that's because one out of three Americans don't get enough sleep. And the crazy part is that's not even the biggest problem because when, because when you go, if you don't get enough vitamins, what are you prescribed? You're prescribed to take supplements. But when you don't get enough sleep, you are prescribed, you prescribe yourself caffeine. And maybe you'll use caffeine once, but that once for some people often turns into twice. That twice becomes three times, and three times becomes a week. That week becomes a month, months become years. And soon you develop a caffeine addiction. And a caffeine addiction, like all other addictions, is especially dangerous at an early age because our bodies aren't fully developed. And in addition to all that, caffeine increases heart problems. Now what's the number one leading cause of death in the United States? Heart disease. That's alarming. We are putting ourselves at risk over work. We are sacrificing our health over work. But I used to be the one out of three Americans. I understand. In fact, one point in my life, I used to go to bed at 2 a.m. or yeah, 2 a.m. every day and wake up at 10 p.m. And I felt so unproductive, I felt so lazy, and I felt so physically unfit. And one day, I was scrolling across YouTube, and I found this YouTuber who was talking about 
the benefits of him waking up early. So I decided to do a bit more research. I found that he is not the only one who wakes up early. And a lot of people that we idolize also wake up early. In fact, Tim Cook, CEO of Apple, wakes up at 3.45 a.m. every day. Oprah Winfrey wakes up before the sun rises each day. Michelle Obama as well. And I thought to myself, if the top 1% wake up early, why don't I try it out as well? So I made it one of my goals, to wake up early every day. And while I'm here saying that I can wake up at 4 a.m. every day and go to bed at 8, it's not that easy to do. In fact, it took me a whole year before I could consistently do it. But I'm here to tell you that it's got numerous benefits. You have less stress, you are more focused, and you're a lot more productive. In addition to all this, your body is enhanced at an optimal level. So before you start that movie late in the night, before you start that Netflix app at 10 PM, think about, will you be doing what's best for your body? Should you really be staying up that late? You're going to have hundreds, if not thousands, if not millions of opportunities to use up your time. But you only have one body, so make it count. Thank you.